Until today, I've never played Age of Wonders 3. In fact, I've never even heard of the game until I bought it a few days ago. As an aspiring game designer though, I thought I'd use this opportunity to really take this game apart. When designing games, one of the most important things to consider is first impressions. So with no previous experience, I think it's time we check this out. When I say I'm going to study this, I don't mean I'm just going to do a review. In fact, every single feature that I possibly can, I'll try to dissect. To understand how something works, or why it works, is the goal. In fact, you can see right now the very script I wrote in preparation for this. I don't plan on giving just a basic commentary either, but I will try to show the process that goes along and include anything important to keep in mind as I go through this. Well, I guess I should just dive into this. I gotta say, I never expected the title to be so accurate. It's been an hour, and already my initial focus is getting foggy. I spent half an hour writing down all of the important information from the getting started part of the in-game dictionary. I already have five and a half pages of notes. 1,380 words. I think I'm successfully answering the question of what features exist, but I have yet to answer the question of how or why they're implemented. I think I'll need a greater understanding of the game before I can go back and break down the importance of each individual feature. I finished another hour a few days ago, with my notes being at nine pages now. As I started to understand the game more, I started to take notes less frequently. One thing I realized was the true importance of tooltips, or easily accessible information. In order to avoid making a system that feels clunky, it's important to make information accessible in other ways. This was my largest problem with the in-game dictionary. If it's difficult to access information, then some people may not even want to bother with trying. Civilization V, a game I'm admittedly addicted to three weeks a year, executes this in a far better way. While it's true that Civ V's dictionary is split up into 16 sections, those sections are far more organized than Age of Wonders. Information is split up in a more concise way, and the way it's split makes looking for anything in particular much easier. Let's compare this to the Tomb of Wonder. One thing to consider is that an in-game dictionary doesn't need to fit the game's lore. Most people use game dictionaries, or any dictionary for that matter, to look for information quickly and easily. I wouldn't say this is the most exciting project I've worked on exactly. One thing I noticed that's also annoying compared to Civ 5 is the lack of advisors. As you may notice, this is kind of overwhelming, and there's no real guidance to what exactly is good. Compare this to Civ 5, where you'll notice that every notable production has certain icons representing which advisor recommends it. For beginners at least, this is really useful for trying to figure out what to do next. As for Age of Wonders, I found I often just went with the option that sounded the best, because looking over all of them seemed tedious. You'll find the same thing happening in the technology view, 
which generally makes it more difficult to comprehend what's good and what's useless, at least as a beginner. Did I expect this project to last longer than four hours? Yeah, I did. While I wouldn't call this a failed project, I think my initial goal of spending around 10 hours breaking down this video game just wouldn't be worth it. I still think it's worth finishing this video though, if only to show my own experiences. I ended up only getting barely over 9 pages of notes. Game-wise, the only thing I've accomplished was beating the tutorial campaign. It's been about a week since I last played, and I still have no desire to go back. I feel like my options are to either finish this video, or completely give it up. Taking the time to study a video game has to be the easiest way to kill any interest in it. While I did learn some valuable things, reading a book on game design would be way more rewarding overall. While I don't think the time was wasted, I just wouldn't recommend this to anyone. This has to be the most boring way to play a video game. 